This video will show the basic steps for beginners to follow along to simulate aerodynamic flow within a wind tunnel. We'll be using CFD to analyze the effects of drag and lift against a generic vehicle design and then make specific geometric modifications and compare resulting drag and lift effects through visual CFD analysis. We'll start by creating a basic 3D geometry of a vehicle using ANSYS Fluent. Under the settings tab, we'll adjust the major and the minor step to produce our working grid. We'll draw a rectangle in the positive X and Y quadrant to serve as a boundary for our vehicle design. And we'll dimension it appropriately to match realistic vehicle height and length. and lines to draw the outline of the generic vehicle design and circles to serve as the wheels. Once the geometry is drawn, we'll trim away the excess lines. From this outline, we'll go to Concept on top, select Surface from Sketches, and select Sketch 1, and then hit Apply, and generate the sketch. Then we'll extrude the surface to a 1.5 meter depth. To create the wind tunnel, we'll go to Tools, select Enclosure, select Uniform, and place it as 3 meters, and then Generate. Now we'll select Create on top, go down to Bowling, place the operation at the bottom to subtract, Hit the enclosure as the target bodies and both the enclosure and the vehicle geometry as the tool bodies and then generate. To begin meshing, we'll open up the meshing window from our fluent window and select generate mesh. and place the element size at 0 0.1 meters. Now we'll name the inlet of our wind tunnel by selecting the face of the left hand side of the enclosure, right clicking and going down to create name selection and naming it as inlet. We'll do the same for the walls of the wind tunnel by using the control key to click multiple faces and naming them. We'll do the same for the outlet of the wind tunnel. To select the vehicle, we'll go to the cursor on top, select box select, and click on the vehicle and name it appropriately. Then we'll hit update. Once the meshing is complete, we'll go to the setup from the Fluent window. For the setup, we'll use the following settings.
For our working fluid, we decided to use hydrogen sulfide just to test the results, but you could use a more conventional material such as air if you would like. For the inlet boundary conditions, we'll use the following. For the solutions method, we'll change the momentum, turbulent kinetic energy, and the turbulent dissipation rate to second order upwind. We'll set the solution initialization to standard and compute from the inlet. Once everything's set, we'll run the calculation with the number of iterations set to 200. Once the calculation is complete, we can select vectors under the graphics tab to analyze the vectors in terms of velocity magnitude. From the velocity vectors and the pressure vectors, we can see a relationship. The slower moving air exerts a larger pressure in the front than in the back, as indicated by the red arrows. That pressure differential is characterized as drag, whereas lift is characterized by the pressure difference in the top and the bottom of the car. We can also see turbulent flow on top and on the frontal area of the vehicle, as noted by flow detachment. To obtain graphs for drag and lift coefficients, We'll go to Report Plots, select New, and New again. Go down to Force Reports, select Drag, highlight everything under the wall zones, check Report Plot at the bottom, and hit OK. You'll repeat the same process when force reporting the lift. Then we'll move the report definitions of lift and drag from the left by adding them to the right. We'll hit OK. Initialize by computing from the inlet. We'll run the calculation by setting the iterations to 40, and then run the calculation. The following plots will result after the calculations have been completed. To make sense of the plot, we'll multiply the drag coefficient plot by a magnitude of 10 raised to the negative 5, and the coefficient of lift plot by 10 raised to the negative 4. Now that we've obtained results for a generic vehicle design, we'll make simple modifications and see how subtle changes can improve a vehicle's performance in terms of drag and lift. We'll begin a new sketch with the same steps and the same process as the previous one. The only difference is that the height will be 0.1 meters less than the first sketch to make it closer to the ground. as well as incorporating greater angled lines around the surface of the vehicle. After trimming away the excess lines, we'll add fillets to eliminate the hard edges to avoid areas of flow detachment and having more continuous laminar flow around the body's contours, significantly reducing the turbulence of the airstream and therefore the air resistance. Having hard edges forces the airflow into a turbulent manner, generating drag, as seen from the first results. The following extrusion and steps will be duplicated from the first generic vehicle geometry and should be referenced.
the meshing method will also be duplicated. We'll also create name selections around the boundaries of the meshing. The setup settings and the boundary conditions will remain the same as from the generic geometry. Based on the final results, we can see a more continuous laminar flow around the body's contours and we can see slower moving air in the front of the vehicle on a much lesser surface area of the car as seen by the fewer red arrows in the front characterized by the high pressure. Again, to make sense of the plot, we'll multiply the drag coefficient plot by a magnitude of 10 raised to the negative 5 and the coefficient of lift plot by 10 raised to the negative 4. The overall coefficient of drag and lift of the modified geometry resulted in values of 0.215 and 0 0.030 respectively, which when compared to the generic geometry values of point. 256 and 0.118, we see a 17.4% reduction in drag and 74.5% reduction in lift from adding more angled slopes, having it lowered to the ground, and fillets around the vehicle's design. Key points to understand from this CFD analysis are as listed. A reduction in drag leads to an increase in top speeds, faster acceleration, and improves fuel economy. Reduction in lift, which means greater downforce, results in greater traction about the tires, therefore improving a vehicle's handling, maneuvering around corners, and stability. Hard edges around a vehicle's geometry leads to turbulent flow generating drag, and fillets eliminate hard edges and avoid areas of flow detachment, allowing for a continuous laminar flow around a vehicle's contours.